In today's video, trouble with your scales came to the right place. Hello, Michael here at Making Music, and today we are talking about one of my favorite subjects, scales. Love them or hate them, probably hate them, that's probably why you're here, but we're gonna be talking to you specifically if you hate your scales, if you don't like your scales, if you can't play your scales, or you just can't, just don't want to do your scales. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that, okay? We've got lots to cover off. We're gonna talk about a couple of mind shift things, uh, get, the right, get in the right frame of mind. We're gonna talk about actually what we want to achieve and how we're gonna do it, and we'll also talk about a couple of techniques about how to get there. Of course, there's always top tip at the end, so do stay tuned for that. But before we do any of that, I've got to say it, guys, you know it, a million more ways to play music and a million more ways to go about it. Advice is based on education, Trinity, bachelor's degree, Royal College, master's degree, and I've been teaching playing professionally for over 20 years. Hope you found something you like. If you do, great. If you don't pay, that's okay too. Whatever you do, please leave me a comment, like the video, and subscribe. Those subscriptions mean an awful lot to me, guys. It means I can continue to make these videos, so please, please, please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. So, let's get into it. So, you could be one of these people that says, well, I, I, I just can't play my scales. I can play anything, but I just can't play my scales. Wrong, <laughs> first of all, wrong. And you'd be surprised at how many people tell me they can't play their scales. You are not alone. There are lots and lots of people who struggle with scales, and that's absolutely fine. But to say that you can't do them, no, let's just leave that one right now, that you can't do that, okay? So, there's a number of different reasons why people can't, can't do their scales. I think the number one is up here. And that brings me on to the very first thing I want to cover off, which is, in order to get better at your scales, you have to want to get better at your scale. Mike, come on, of course I want to get better. I just don't really want to put the time in. Yeah, okay, right, so you're gonna have to get over that. You need to put the time in if you want to get better at it. You're gonna have to want to get better at it. Um, to put it into context, um, you're probably getting something out of not doing it, if that makes sense. The pain of getting better at your scales is, at the moment, outweighing the benefits of being good at your scales. Making sense? Let me put it a different way. If you talk to a lot of adults, or some adults, um, I remember I used to do this as a kid myself, um, and you know, there'd be an adult who, you know, you know they're smoking, and they're saying, yeah, I probably should stop. And you think, well, why just don't, just stop smoking? Just stop, just stop, you know, or, or with any addiction, without me, whether that be candy bars or chocolate bars, whatever, it's an addiction, right? Why don't you just give up? You know full well that, you know, smoking is expensive, um, it's not good for your health, um, it doesn't smell particularly nice, so just give up. Yeah, but you know what, I know I should, but um, I don't want to. You see, they're getting something out of it, the, po the, po the positives of doing it is that outweighing the negatives of not doing it. See, see what I'm saying? Until one day they cough up blood and then they need to go to the doctor and the doctor says, you better quit that and suddenly realize, okay, I really had better quit because suddenly, see what I mean? The balance has shifted. So you've got to want to and you've got to uh, you change your frame of mind. It's no good being the victim in this one. So many people, they get this um, almost like a badge, a, a, a label. Oh well, I've, I'm great at everything. I just can't do my scales. No, no, there is no excuse for not knowing your scales. No excuse. So we have to change, and we have to want to change. Okay. Um, I do just want to give a little quick story. Um, you might think, well, Mike, you know, you, you've always been good at your scales, and yes, I have always been good at my scales on the piano. Never had a problem with scales on the piano. But I too struggled with my scales on the bassoon. Oh yes, I did. Um, and I would I was exactly that person. I go, yeah, I can do my scales, yeah, fine on the piano, but just not on the bassoon. And then I just leave it at that, yeah. Because it's almost as if that because I could do it on one instrument, well it didn't really matter too much if I didn't do it on the other. I wasn't prepared to put the work in, the time in to get better as on the bassoon on the bassoon. 
Until what happened, I got a big wake-up call. I went for, for an audition at the uh, Birmingham Conservatoire. Um, it was actually very early in the, in the audition season. All the London conservatoires, they, they were much later than like in December. This was just at, right at the end of October, so I wasn't really ready for it anyway. Not that that's an excuse, but they asked me some scales in the audition, and I completely messed them up. Completely messed them up, okay? And, uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you, the, the, the person who auditioned me wasn't terribly um, pleasant. She, she tore me to pieces, absolutely tore me to pieces. Um, not just because of the scales, but because the programme wasn't in chronological order or something. It's like, really? Anyway, she didn't really understand the programme anyway, but it doesn't matter. Um, but she said, look, there is no excuse for not knowing your scales. And that was my wake-up call. That was it. After that, I was like, right, I've got to do this. If I'm going to have any chance of getting into the London Conservatoires, I'm going to have to get better at this. And lo and behold, I did. And I got in. Yeah, it was it was, it was fine anyway, because, I mean, I wanted to come to London. But funnily enough, actually, the Conserv Birmingham Conservatoire rang me up then in January and asked me to re-audition, because they hadn't, I don't think they had enough candidates, so I was quite lucky. So I did actually manage to get a place there in the end. But... Hey, once I had my place at Trinity, that was it. I, that's where I wanted to go, or always wanted to go there. So that was that. Anyway, let's carry on. Okay, one more thing that we need to cover off on the mindset is stop the negative talk. Finish. No more negative talk. I don't want to hear anyone say, I just can't do my scales. Yes, you can. You can, 110% you can do your scales. You just need to put the time in or we'll figure out what it is you're doing wrong, and hopefully we can help with a couple of things in this video. Okay, so you are now in a position where you're thinking, okay, right, I've got to do this, I know it's for the, for the best, once I learn them, it's like riding a bike, you know, you're gonna remember for the rest of your life, so great, you, you're gonna, you put time in, gonna be much, much better, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I know you're gonna hit me, but you've got to know what being good at your scales look like, and that means what is your goal, okay? So, for me, being good at my scales means I can do, just on, uh, means I can do all majors, all, all um, harmonics, minors, uh, melodic minors, all contramotion, all of them, lots, um, do them all in thirds, do them all in sixes, do all arpeggios, do them in all the different versions, do uh, 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 chromatics um, in, in similar motion and contramotion, broken chords, Dominant sevenths, diminished sevenths, I think I've missed some out somewhere. Yeah, anyway, you get the idea, right? So that, that to me is being good at my scales for me, okay? That's on the piano, by the way. I can't do contramotion on the bassoon. Okay, but for you, for you, being good at your scales might be, I can do my next set of scales for my next grade exam. I want to be good at those, okay? That could be what it is that you're looking for, okay? So know what it is that you want to do and set yourself that goal. If you haven't seen my video about setting goals, please, please, please do check it out. Link somewhere, wherever it is, check it out because it talks about setting smart goals and that's really important in this as well. Know what it is you need to do, to get to. Do you know? Yeah, get, yeah. Know where it is you're going. Know, where you, know what it is what you want to achieve. So now that you know where this you are, going, what you want to achieve, you have to break it down. Now, one of the elements in SMART is time. So you might say to yourself, let's, let's take an example. We want to learn, you, you've just done your grade three exam uh, and you missed out on your merit or your distinction by four marks or something like that. You are gutted. And worst thing about it is you failed the scale part of your exam, which is the easiest marks to get. You failed it. What you do, come on people, right? So you think, no, I have got to do this once and for all, I'm going to get a good mark on my grade four scales and I'm doing, um, I'm gonna do everything I can to, to get there. So let's pretend it's in January and you're hoping to do the exam in the summer term, okay? So that gives you a chunk of time to work with. So let's say, just for argument's sake, let's say you've got, I don't know, 16 weeks. Uh, you've, got, you've got a few weeks off because you're going on vacation, holiday, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so you know you can't be practicing those weeks. Uh, and you've got, so you've, got, you've got 16 weeks uh, in order to get better at your sketch for your grade four. So, how do you do it? Well, first you give yourself a bit of a buffer. Okay, so let's say you give yourself a four week buffer. So that means you've got 12 weeks. And let's say, just for argument's sake, you've got 36 scales to learn. Well, lo and behold, that's three scales per week. 
Do you see what I mean? And what I would do with my students a lot of times, because I had so many students that would come to me and say, I can't do my scale. Yes, you can. I would say, okay, right, we're doing one scale this week. That's it, just one scale, just one. That's all I want from you next week. You come into a new lesson, it's a, it's a five minute lesson. <laughs> okay, obviously not, we'll do other things as well. But scales wise, I just want that one scale. Don't tell me that you can't learn one scale in a week. You're looking at your 36 scales that you need to learn and you're getting a little bit bamboozled by them. Going, oh my God, overwhelming. There's too, many, there's too much to learn. No, break it down. You have to break it down. Get it into small chunks that you can do, okay? We'll talk a little bit more about that, but this we're talking about breaking your goal down here. So your goal then for the next 12 weeks is to learn three scales every week. Think you can't do that? I think you can, right? So no, don't try and do too much. Break it down, do this just through, do those three scales per week or whatever is your goal is. That's why it's really important to make sure you know what it is that you're doing. Okay, people, right, so you know what your goal is. You have made a plan about how you're going to achieve it. You're going to do those three scales every single week. What do you do now? Oh, I can, I really can, I'm gonna feel this one. People are really gonna get angry with me. I have to say, guys, break it down, slow it down. It's really quite a fundamental type of thing here, people. You'll notice I've said this many times, I'm gonna say it many more times again. Break it down, slow it down. Please, please, please. Right, if you can't play all of your major scales, pick one. If you can't play that one, if for the two octaves that you need to, make it into one octave. If you can't play it for that one octave, break it into a micro scale, make it four, five notes. If you can't do that, break it two notes. And to, don't tell me you can't play one note after the other. Yes, you can. And if that is what's causing you the problem, go from one note to another note, then you've got to break it down into that. Right, on the piano, for instance, you know, you've got key, 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 key. They're all next to each other. You can do it. If you're using the right fingering, you're fine, okay? You can, you can do it. If you're, for instance, playing um, a, a woodwind instrument or something, there are many times, especially when the higher registers, when you're doing one fingering and suddenly you're going to this fingering, so you go, like all down and then suddenly you gotta lift that one up and that and there and then up to G, A, B. Do you see what I mean? There's a lot of finger coordinating that needs to, to happen for some of those ones. So sometimes I would simply just go from one note to the other. Dun, 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 in order to achieve, you know, to, to make sure that the, it's, it's more fluent, okay? Now, the other thing which then brings me on to my next point is think fast, play slow. Wow. Think fast, play slow. Be meticulous, absolutely like a machine. As, as, as Andrea used to say to me, Michael, I want you to play like a Swiss clock. It has, every movement has to be precise. There's no fat in it anyway. There's no flimsiness in, in the playing. It has to be precise. All that kind of thing you see in Hollywood of the playing piano, yeah, like, la, la, la. no, 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 no. That's not, <laughs> that's not practice. That's not learning to play the instrument. That's just being, that's just being a showman. There's a time and a place for that, and it is not when you're learning your scales. No, be precise. Like I was showing, you know, movement. Think fast. Where am I going? I'm going from that E to that F sharp. There, 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 there. Do you see what I mean? Very thinking. Focus, but playing it slowly, but really strong movements, okay? Follow me so far? Good, hang in there. Okay, people, the next thing I'm going to say to you is five minutes. You would be surprised at how much you can achieve in five minutes every single day. If you're struggling for motivation to do your scales, get a timer, I'm sure you've got one on your phone, set it to five minutes and do nothing but scales for those five minutes. You would be surprised how much you get done in that, in that five minutes. And I bet you, oh, not every time, but a lot of times you'll get to that five minutes and go, oh, was that it? Oh, oh, I'm just in the middle of this. I'll, I'll just take another few minutes and just finish that off. Before you know it, you've done eight, 10 minutes, something like that, okay? So, yeah, don't underestimate how much you can actually do in five minutes. If you do it consistently, day after day after day after day, you'll be fine. Obviously, it depends on what grade you're doing, depends on what your level is, but 
if you're really struggling for that, start with five minutes and then dial it up um, as, as the weeks progress, yeah? So really, that's a, it's a great way to, to go about um, starting your sketch. Okay, people, and then the last thing I really wanna to talk to you about is, well, there are so many different aspects of your scales that we could, we could talk about. Are you playing them fluently? Do they need to be done staccato, legato, is that a problem? You know, I can't go into all of this. What I'm hoping is that this video has given you just some some good things to start off with. You want me to cover something else off with regards to scales and practicing them? Please, please, please let me know. Leave a comment for me um, and we can pick that up at another time. But look, we're almost at the end of the video, so we're just going to do a quick summary. So first and foremost, remember the psychological stuff. Remember, don't, uh, uh, um, that you have to, first first of all, you have to want to get better at your scales. Secondly, stop the negative talk. Uh, know what your goal is, how you're going to get there break it down to achieve it in, in uh, achievable steps um, obviously break it down slow it down take five minutes if you're struggling for motivation um, and obviously <laughs> talk to your teacher because they might be able to help you as well um, look that's that's it for this week we just got time for our top tip and the top tip for this week is don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good don't let perfect be the enemy of the good now, what does that mean? That means some people spend so much time in the planning stage that they never ever get around to doing anything. So they never actually get any good out of it. It's great to have a great plan in place, absolutely, and I'm all for that, but don't spend all of your time planning and then no time practicing, okay? If you need to just get going, just do something, uh, take that first step uh, that you need to, what is, it? What is that phrase? Uh, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Something like, if you know the proverb, you can write it down. Please, please, yeah. Uh, so just get going with it. Don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Okay, look, thank you so much for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, you know the drill. Comments, like the video, subscribe, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.